Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress, and today I'm going to tear my refrigeration apart for your viewing pleasure. The last refrigeration video I did, I went into the theory of it, you know, how it works in your head. Today, I'm going to actually fix a fridge. Uh, my fridge failed, it uh, got a gas leak, the gas leak got very bad and I really had to address it. Um, so I did. I want to apologize for what I look like and what I kind of am doing in this video because I had just got out of bed from being sick. I hadn't moved in like, seriously, two months. So this was a tough day for me. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Anyway, this video will teach you a lot about how fridge works. You're going to watch one get torn down. But it's also, you know, one of those videos you've been asking for. A day in your life or just me doing a project. This is me doing a project on a day I did not want to do it. Enjoy. This fridge is failing. Um, it's losing gas and uh, as it loses gas, you'll see in the freezer, the frost line will just start going down. It's probably the most common failure of a fridge, They're them losing gas. This one's losing gas pretty fast now, uh, so I really have to address it. But sometimes they just lose gas such that it takes like a year and a half for it to go down, and every very occasionally you have to top it off. When they're losing that rate, it's almost impossible to figure out where it's losing gas from, so you probably just keep topping it off. We'll top it off at the end, and uh, you'll see how to do that. If there's one thing you want to do, if you're going to do it yourself with fridges, is learn how to top off your own gas. There's a lot of other things that can go wrong, but we'll get to those as we go through it. So let's take a look in the freezer. This is our refrigerator and freezer. And years ago, I had what most all of you have now, a, uh, uh, the evaporators that are made out of aluminum. Uh, I didn't like it. It was too small and you can't see a custom one, you know, get a custom one made anymore because they're all made in China. So I made this one myself out of uh, copper sheeting. I made a box out of copper and then I soldered on uh, copper tubing. And I really like it a lot. It's bigger and I like that. But I like about it also is it's just tough as nails because it's copper. I can actually take a, you know, a, a knife to it and chip off the hunks of ice. But as you can see, even though this has been running, the frost line has come down quite a bit. Uh, in fact, overnight it came all the way down. So yeah, things are still frozen, but it's right on the edge. It's time to fix this. Anyway, that's what you see on the inside. Now let's take a look on the outside. This is where we keep the refrigeration equipment, all the refrigeration equipment. So you guys that are interested in the air conditioner, there's air conditioner parts in this cabinet as well. But the actual refrigerator is this sled down here. Uh, oh, as an aside, yeah, I know it's a mess. The wires aren't retained, but I'm a big fan of the, you either have to have a really clean desk, all organized, or you have to have an organized mind. I like to think I have an organized mind. So. Since I'm the only one that works with this stuff and I know where it all goes, I don't worry about that quite so much, but uh, to each his own. Well, um, Sled's been in here for a while since we've had our last problem and last major problem, let's say. To take the sled out, I have to recharge it. I don't want to do that lightly. So one thing that's failed is the fan failed and I just put another fan right on top of that one. So one of the things I'll do today is put a new fan in. And many months ago, um, one of our condensers, remember we talked about condensers, that's where the hot gas becomes a, a high pressure liquid, um, failed. So I bought a new one. It's just a little bigger so it matches the air conditioner's uh, condenser. For the fridge, I use both a water condenser and an air condenser. And the air condenser's used a lot in the northern latitudes uh, and particularly if I'm in a place with a lot of barnacle growth and stuff because I don't want them growing in here. Uh, but when I'm down in like Panama where the water is just clean as can be but the air is really hot, it's so much more efficient to pump some uh, salt water through. 
anyway, I rig it up with both. I run my uh, gases uh, first through this, and then I run them through the air com uh, condenser and then off to the fridge. Oh, uh, let's see, what else? Um, well, I guess that's about it. Let's see if we can find the leak to start with. I have this neat device, and this is definitely a luxury item. Um, you probably wouldn't want one, though they're so cheap now from China. This is under a hundred bucks. This is a, um, a Halon sniffer. And the short of it is, it can kind of smell the fluorocarbon. And if you find a leak, you'll run this near it. And it's, it's sort of like playing with a metal detector, you know? It makes the same kind of sounds and it'll tell you where the gas is leaking. So it takes a few seconds to warm up and let's give it a go. You can hear it. And you go around all of the little connectors and let it get a good sniff. And I happen to know this is the one that's leaking. Well, it's leaking really slowly. Turn the sensitivity up. I've been sniffing around and I can't get it to go off, but I have found in the past that this is where it was leaking. Um, I think it's not going off because there's just so very little gas in the system right now. There's no pressure. It's at its lowest point. Uh, I found it before. I'll grab the gear again and I'll turn it on when we um, have the gas out so you can hear the sound it makes. It, it's a cool little device and it's, it's worth having now that they're so cheap. All right, time to get the sled out. I'm just gonna pull the sled out. I'll do this off camera because it's not terribly exciting. I'm just gonna do some bolts, unhook some fittings and bring it out here where we can see it and I can work on it. All right. Okay, this is the refrigerator sled. This has all the components that move. Uh, it's everything really except for what goes in the refrigerator freezer box itself, the things that get cold. This way they're all in one place, which is handy and, uh, well, theoretically easier to store and work on. Uh, when you get to see the air conditioner video, you'll see that I didn't do it with a sled base. I did it kind of spread all over, but I needed to because that's the only room I had. I didn't have room for another big thing like this. <coughs> Sorry about the cough, still getting over that. Okay, so what we've got here is a base plate, and I just made this myself out of some scrap uh, stainless steel I had hanging around, and everything's bolted down to that. Uh, this black uh, ovaly thing is the compressor itself. This is, again, what um, squeezes the low pressure gas into high pressure gas. It comes out of that, and it goes into the condenser which is this bit right here. It's kind of like the radiator in a car. This is just ducting, so it pulls cool air from my bilge up and through everything. Uh, by the end of this project, this is gonna be in there, and this is another condenser that the gas will go through first. So if I wanna shoot water, you know, we talked about that. Uh, there's a um, fan here, and why there's two fans is this, this fan failed, and I couldn't reach in to get the bolts off. So instead of taking it all out just to change the fans, I just slapped another fan on top of it. But uh, we'll take care of that during this process. And uh, after we run through all of that, we come out, we go through, well, the, these are the high pressure and the low pressure access ports. We'll go a lot more into that when I start gassing it up. We'll take a good look at what those do. And then it goes through this. This is called a filter dryer. And it's just what it says. It filters the liquid that's coming out of the condenser. And if there's any moisture, there's like a desiccant in here and it'll suck up that moisture as much as it can. This is a really big one for a fridge this size. Usually you see itty bitty little ones. Uh, when you buy them the way I buy them, they all basically cost the same, so why not? And uh, then the gas goes off uh, and does its work in the refrigeration box. So I guess I'll take the, uh, the fan out and fix that part first. So this is the working fan. And 
this is the non-working fan. I made this little plate out of stainless steel and I mounted the fan in it. Um, if you just put the fan in the general vicinity of the condenser, it'll work. But it does suck some air from areas you don't want and it's just not as efficient. And this was just me, you know, being crazy efficient. <clears throat> Let me talk a little about these uh, compressor sleds. Now, this one I made myself a lot of scrap parts that I had and then, a, you know, a new compressor and control unit and parts that I needed. Um, you can buy these all kind of sort of pre-made that you don't have to exactly charge from various companies. Uh, Adler Barber makes a lot of them. Uh, Isotherm. It's a lot of companies. Uh, don't get hung up on who's you buy. They're all using either the Danfoss BD50 or the Danfoss BD35F compressors, which are great compressors. They are all using all the same components. Some of them add like an extra little board that does almost nothing. It has a light and a relay on it. And I tell you, that little board fails more than anything else. Uh, I go to a lot of boats that have that failure and Emily likes to laugh at my joke. Well, here's your problem right here. And I take the board off and just bypass it and then they're all fine. The point is, um, either build your own system or if you want to buy one of their pre-charged systems and that's got their place on a lot of boats uh, and a lot of skill levels, don't worry about which one you buy. They're the same as far as I'm concerned. Go with what you get the best deal on. But whatever you do later on when you have somebody help, don't uh, say that you have an isotherm and you paid more for it, or I don't know which ones are more expensive, with great pride, because anybody that you're hiring to fix it knows they're all exactly the same. But when this fails again in another 15 years or 20 years, Hopefully I'll remember that it's just sprung in there and I can pull the whole thing right out, metal plate and all, but I won't. Okay. This little flare fitting seems to be leaking. I sure hope this is the problem. Ugh. And it I think what I'll do, well, let me look at it first. All right, what I'm gonna do here is uh, cut off this flare fitting. I think it got work hardened. Uh, copper does that. You, you bend it so much and it hardens right up and you either need to anneal it by heating it up and then letting it cool again. Or in the case of what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna cut a bit off and put a new flare in. The very act of flaring it hardens it quite a bit. You'll see it, it deforms it into the shape I want. So here's the current flare fitting that was leaking probably. And I'm gonna cut it off. Flare fittings are pretty great. Here's an example of the, what this is gonna go into. It looks like that. There's this angle on a piece of brass or steel or whatever it is, and then this threaded section. And we're going to flare this tubing so that it fits right over that, those angles match up. And then there's going to be this nut that's going to use these threads to jam them right together so hard that the copper will deform a little bit and it won't leak. Um, they're my favorite kind of fittings to use when I don't actually solder something. <coughs> In this case, I had to get the tubing all straight so I could do this. And that was rather difficult to do because it was such a short radius bend but it's done. All right, so I'm about to put the flare on here. Uh, what's vitally important, and I swear to you, you will screw up first few times you do it, and then you'll screw up periodically throughout your life. Put the flare nut on before you make the flare, cause you can't put it on afterwards. Okay, so anyway, you put the little flare clamp over there, and you tighten it down. And this is much easier if you're not in the middle of a refrigeration sled. With just a little bit of this standing up proud, just a little bit, I got too much here. All 
Okay. Clamp that right down on your pipe, and you can see there's all different size tubings these, these little kits work for. These kits cost very little. Every hardware store has them. Okay, you get the clamp in, and then you take this, and I'm going to hook that over, and this, this angle is that magic angle we want. It'll just form the copper right to the size we want. Back it up a little bit. All right. It's kind of self-centering once you get it in the general vicinity. And then you just tighten this down. And right now it is working the copper, which is hardening it, and that's sad, but it's forming it just to the shape we're gonna need. Then we just take it off and take off the clamp. And now we have the flare. Now you got to make sure this nut's going to fit over it, and it does. And in my case, I can actually assemble this part right now. And it's going to go right on there like that. I found this stuff. Um, it's a gasket thread sealant, and it uh, works with refrigeration, supposedly. I assume that means that it is, uses the same oil as a solvent, so it won't plug things up. And I have been adding a little bit of this to my flares lately. This flare that leaked, I didn't have any on. But so far, I haven't had a leak on one. So I'm sure it works great, and it keeps tigers away, and all of that. Anyway, I'm putting some in there. And I'm going to put that right on now. Half project, something like this, finding where you put down your wrenches. You want to move the nut, not the copper parts. And clamp it right down. Doesn't have to be ridiculous, but it can be pretty darn tight. That should do it. Okay, supposedly, if I found the right leak, that just fixed our problem. And that's how it has to be when it's installed. <coughs> now I have to decide if I'm going to do this today. This probably doesn't interest you quite as much, but I'm adding this, uh, this component into the mix so that I can cool with water. What happens here is there are these two little uh, tubies here and the, uh, I'll take it out. The refrigerant goes around between the two pipes. There's two pipes, one inside the other and the salt water goes through the inner pipe. And then of course, the salt water pulls the heat right off the refrigerant. And I got it all polished up a little bit. I made a little adapter here because it, I'm on quarter inch pipe and this uses a whale a little bit bigger. So let me do that first. Um, this is where we get to play with fire. Little flux. Not too much. Now for a little soldering. I am not an expert at this. I don't do it very often, but it usually works. That's my adapter. 
Now to go at it. Oh, it's hot. So, we got the line here where the high pressure gas comes out of the compressor and it goes over to the condenser, so the air condenser. I'm going to break that line and I'm going to bend it up and have it go into this uh, salt water condenser and then out the other side. I almost never use this big cutter because there's so many times I can't get anywhere with it. It came in a kit, so I, I got it. It came with the flare kit. But these little ones are handy as can be and they can cut almost as much. Cut anything I ever need to cut. How you use them, it's got a little blade here that's there the same and two little rollers. And you tighten it down and spin it around a couple times and then just tighten it a little more and spin it around and it keeps pushing that blade further and further and it parts the copper. And if you solder anything clean, just clean all the surfaces that are going to have to come in contact. Uh, the Scotch-Brite works really well. The copper oxide does not take solder very well. Okay, and then finally, when you cut something, there's sometimes little burrs and you do not want that inside your refrigerant. So, I'm going to tip this for gravity helping me and deburr that. Blood. God, am I just shaky?
that was a hassle, but it's soldered on now. Um, I'm going to now test for leaks in the solder I've done. And what I'm doing here is one of the nice things about using quarter inch flare fittings. I'm using my gauge set right across the whole sled from the high pressure to the low pressure. We we'll turn the vacuum on and if it holds the vacuum, then it doesn't have a leak. Pretty simple. And it don't have to waste any gas to find out. Pressure's going down. Okay, I'm going to turn the pump off now. Oops. Okay, I've turned off the valve and I've turned off the pump. And now, if the pressure stays low, and it appears to, that means I don't have any leaks. Looks good. I'm going to leave that for a little while because, well, let's give it some time to actually leak. And most importantly, I need a break. But sled's ready to go back in and we shall have refrigeration by the, within the hour. Okay, we're hooked up now. Uh, got the gauge set in there. I've got my blue wire going to the low pressure side of the system and my red tube here going to the high pressure side. Normally, you would just vent a little gas out so you get all the air out of your line and put in some more gas. But since we took all the get air out of the, all the gas out of the system, air got in. And also, it's really humid here, so moisture got in. Moisture is your absolute enemy inside the system. So, we're going to be using this device. This is a vacuum pump, and it's going to suck everything out of the system. So I open up my valves, and I turn on my pump. And we let it evacuate. Now, uh, this is also a leak test, because once it pulls vacuum, and it takes a little while to pull a vacuum, uh, we can shut it all down and the needles shouldn't move. But if they are moving, that means air is getting into the system to a leak and fluorocarbon will go out through the same leak. So that's good. It's going down pretty well. I think this is going to be a good fix. I'm going to let this set for a fair amount of time. Uh, probably like, let me turn the pump off. I'm going to let this with the pump on sit for about 20 minutes or so. And It'll be in a vacuum, but just it's almost there now. But <clears throat> the reason you want to run it for quite some time is much as uh, like in our pressure cooker video, we showed how water gets hotter. It boils at a higher temperature if you apply pressure to it. Water does the exact opposite when you pull a vacuum. It will boil at a very, very warm temperature, a very low temperature. And uh, if I pull a vacuum, all the little microscopic bits of water that might be in the system will boil into steam even here at 80 degrees, even at like 50 degrees, no problem. So we're going to give that time to absorb some heat and turn it into a gas and then let this device do its best at trying to get that gas out of there. So the system will be a true vacuum and dry. So we're going to do that now. Okay, 20 minute break. Okay, I'm stopping the video there. We've uh, pulled the vacuum. We've got it kind of in a state where we just have to add gas and turn it on. Uh, the adding gas is the same as what you would need if you just want to top off your system. The most common failure in refrigeration. You just need some more gas. So I'm going to make that a separate video and that video will be just how to top off the gas. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, like it, you know, subscribe, please do all those things. If you want, if you're having trouble with your fridge or you'd like to get your head around this or you want any advice at all, of course, we've got Patreon. So if you go over there, um, I can be reached very personally and directly and answer any of your questions. Good day and uh, enjoy boating.